What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about tire deformation and how this affects the aerodynamics of the tires and the car itself. So a car has four wheels, obviously, and how do these tires deform? Why do they deform? Well, not only do we have the loading on the tire, which then affects the bulge here, but the, when it touches the ground, but when you actually rotate these tires, these wheels, you have these centrifugal forces on them really throwing out the rubber outwards. So when you are going at, let's say, 100 kilometers an hour, 150 kilometers an hour, 200 kilometers per hour, these centrifugal forces become greater and greater to the point where these tires deform quite a lot. And we actually get the tires expanding in the radial direction, so it gets bigger this way, and contracting in the axial direction, so it gets thinner. And that is because we only have so much rubber to go around, so as the rubber gets thrown out from the center, it has to then contract around the sides. And in terms of what affects how much this tire deforms, it comes down to not just how fast you go. So the faster you go, the more centrifugal force you'll have as you go around in the wheel, but also the manufacturer of the tire. So if you go for Michelin um, tire, for example, compared to a continental tire, these will deform differently. Uh, not, not to mention if you have different size tires. So obviously bigger wheels, they have different centrifugal forces on them. And also the temperature that the tires get to. So if you have a hotter day, these tires are going to be at different temperatures. So that will then change the plasticity of the rubber. So in terms of the actual deformation during a cruising around, as you go to higher velocities, the deformation gets greater and greater. We start off with maybe a couple millimeter deformation when we're just going around the city. But as you go to highway speeds and faster, these deformations can go up to about 10 millimeters, even higher. 14 millimeters have been seen. So they get bigger this way, 5, 10 millimeters, and get shorter, or get thinner this way, 5, 10 millimeters as well. So what effect does this have on the aerodynamics of the car and the wheels as well? Well, in terms of looking at this picture here, as the wheels get bigger this way, we have more air funneling down and up. So this changes how much air we get funneled into this contact patch region. What's more, as we rotate the wheel around and it contracts in the axial direction, the tire tread gets closer together and they often get smaller, these actual grooves. So that means that we don't have as much flow going through near the contact patch, which means that we have more flow actually having to go around the wheel as well. What's more, as the tire gets thinner, the edge here, the shoulder gets sharper. So all these factors result in the flow being much more likely to separate around this edge here. And as you get more flow separating around here, you get a greater wake and that increases the drag. Also, you have more air funneling into this lower part here, which increases the uh, jetting vortex strength here as well. Now, in terms of the front wheels compared to the back wheels, there's actually a difference as well that we've found. Um, the front wheels do see a bigger wake, but the rear wheels see an even bigger wake because the reason for this isn't exactly that known at the moment, but it's probably because the rear wheels have a slow moving flow hitting them as opposed to the front wheels. So if you have a slow moving flow hitting a wheel, trying to stay attached around the shoulder will become harder and harder because you don't have as much energy to go around this uh, smaller radius of curvature now. So that is how tire deformation affects the aerodynamics of a wheel and why we have deformation to begin with and how that affects the, the drag of the car. Oh, I should also mention, that in terms of the numbers, generally speaking, we get about a uh, two to five count increase in the drag of the car, which is about a 5% increase, and, or two to 5% increase as well. And also the area that these wheels actually take up, because now we're getting bigger in the radial direction, it's expanding this way, the frontal area of the wheels in that way sometimes increases. So that increase in frontal area, that um, this reduction in the axial direction doesn't account, doesn't override, can result in the overall drag of the car actually increasing as well, not just the drag coefficient. So that is it in this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you this one. Peace, amigos.